Drumlet is already awesome for whipping up quick and powerful web apps in Python. Wouldn't it be great if you could build those apps even faster? Imagine letting users describe their desired Drumlet app with either a simple image mockup that you could draw yourself on a piece of paper or even on an iPad. Or you could also provide natural language text prompt as the input. Well, in this video, I'll show you how you could build a web app that does exactly that by leveraging OpenAI. Think of it as a supercharged starter code template that'll help you take your Streamlit app development to the next level. And without further ado, let's dive in. So this is the Streamlit app builder that we're going to build today. And as you can see here, we're going to be able to either show the app how you want the app to be built, or you could also tell the app in written form how you want the app to be built. So let me show you with the first option here, where let's say if you want to upload your own mockup images, you could also do that. You'll click on the toggle here, and then you could drop or click the button here to upload your own image. And I'm going to show you with some example mockup images here. So this is the first example that I'm going to show you. And then we're going to click on built. And so note that this example here is pre-generated. So I already generated the output from this particular app. And then in order to save costs of the API, we're just printing it out for you, the pre-generated one. But if you were to download this image and upload it back into the app, you're going to get something similar to this one here. So you're going to see that it is generating this part and below. And so the code generated is right here. And you could feel free to copy and paste it into your own streamletapp.py file. And so what this app is asking for is a basic app that prints out the data frame and also a chart of the states with the corresponding values from the population. And the app that is generated from the Streamlit Builder app does just that. So it prints out the title of the app. It provides the slider, something similar to the one in the mockup image. And then it'll give you the data frame here as the table. And then it'll provide the plot of the states, as you can see here. And if you click on the other one, which is a stock visualizer, In this example, we're using Amazon, and then we have the price here, and then we have the two columns, which are the months and the price, and then it'll generate the example data here, and then it'll read it into the data frame, and then it'll print out the select box in the slide bar here, as you can see. And then finally, we're going to display the chart and also the table of the data frame as provided here. So this allows you to build the app here that you could use as a starter template in only a few seconds. Let me show you the tell. Build an app that prints hello world. So I know this is very simple, but then for example purposes, we're going to use this one. And so in real time, it's pulling data from the Open AI, and as you guessed it, it's very simple, just ST title. And then it provides you some instructions on how you could run this. We could provide more complex example, build an app that provides an, a catalog of t-shirt with description, with title, description, price, and stock shown as a data frame along with how about that stat or how about along with the image of the t-shirts click on build all right and it'll describe the process step by step importing the libraries creating the example data here and then it'll print out the data frame for the t-shirt example, we have the description, we have the price and the stock. And in this example, there are two t-shirts in the example. And there you go. You could copy all of this and then put it into your app.py file. And then you have a starter template to help you get started quicker. 
All right, and so let's have a deeper dive into the underlying code, which is shared by this app here. So you could access the app by going to builder.streamlet.app, or you could also fork a copy of this, or you could also go to the GitHub repo by clicking on this icon, which will bring you to this particular repository at github.com. So the tech stack, as mentioned already, is leveraging OpenAI and Streamlit as the front end. OpenAI will generate the underlying code that you see here, below here, and the mock-up image as provided here, or even the one that you will draw yourself, as well as the text here are the input prompts. All right, and so let's have a look at the repository here, and you're gonna see that it is comprised of the Streamlit app.py, which is the heart and brain of this particular app. And the requirements here will provide a list of the libraries that are being used by the app. And so here we're using Streamlit, we're using the OpenAI library, and also we're using the Streamlit image select component, which allows us to see the image here as a carousel. When we click on it, it will select this and use it as the input for our app. The placeholder.py is loading up. So this is a backup code that you could also feel free to include in the app as well as a checking mechanism of the OpenAI API credential. So you could allow the user to either enter their own API credentials or you could also provide it on the back end, which when you deploy the app, you'll be able to specify the secrets. And so I'll provide you the link to the secrets management for details on how to do that. And the pre-generated code is in the mockup code.py file here. So we're putting in the pre-generated code for the first mockup in the mockup one function. And then the mockup two function will contain the code that is pre-generated in the mockup two function. So the pre-generated code will then be displayed in the app in the example so that we could save some API costs. Otherwise, with each run of this particular app, it will incur the API costs. Or you could also upload your own mockup image as well. Alrighty, and so let's head over back. And the image for the mockup are here. The first mockup image and the second mockup image. Let's have a look at the code here. And so in this streamlit app.py file, you're gonna see that it's using less than 200 lines of code. And let's have a code by code block walkthrough of what each block is doing. So the first seven lines is essentially importing the necessary library dependencies. So here, starting with Streamlit SST, then we're gonna use base64 because we're gonna use it for encoding the image that is uploaded to the app. And we're gonna use the time library in order to add a sleep function so that the app will sleep temporarily before it is showing you the pre-generated code. And then we're going to use the OpenAI library in order to perform the LOM generation of the code output. We're using the Streamlit image select component here in order to allow the user to select images of the mockup. And finally here, we're using the mockup code as the pre-generated output that we're going to display in the app. All right, and so in this first block here, from lines 9 through 12, we're going to set the page configuration of our app. We're going to assign the emoji here as the page icon, which you'll see here in the app. And you're going to see two icons because one is the page icon, which is this one. And the next one is the emoji that we've also put here in the page title. And then in the app, we're going to have it called Streamlit App Builder, which is displayed here. And then st.info here will display a description of the app, which is shown here in the blue box. So aside from st.info, you could also use st.error and also st.warning, and it will have different color, like pink and also yellow. Now onto the next part. 
So here we're just specifying the API key. So we're using st.secrets and then the underlying API key will be in the secrets management of the app deployed on the community cloud. So you could replace this block of code here with the one in the placeholder in order to add mechanisms for taking in API keys from the user. All right, and now we're gonna use the st.tabs in order to create the tab for the show and tell. So here we have the two tabs, show and tell, in order to make the app less space occupying, making it more concise. So in the show tab, we're gonna have the contents under show, and then under the tell tab, we're gonna have the respective contents. So because we're defining st.tabs to the tabs variable, and then we're gonna display the underlying content below, we're gonna use width tabs and then the slice of zero, which will specify the first tab which is the show. And then the second tab will be displayed using the slice of one, which will then show you the second tab. So the entirety of lines 22 until lines 137, is going to go to the first tab for the show. And then lines 142 until lines 192 will go into the second tab for the tell. And so you're gonna see that some of the code might be repeating a bit and so you could feel free to refactor the code as well. Well, let's have a look here. So lines 22 until 26, this block of code will essentially be the toggle for uploading your own image mockup right here, the toggle here, which will show you the image uploader widget right here. And then you could upload the image either as PNG, JPEG. And then we're gonna encode the image we're using the base64 library in order to do that. And so the encoded image will then be used as an input to the vision capability of OpenAI. We're also going to show the image once it is uploaded. And then this is the encoded image. And then next we're gonna have the next toggle, which will be the example mockup images shown here in the second toggle right here. So first part here will just be a list of the mockup images one and two. And then we have the subheader to display. Try these example mockup images, which is right here. And then we have a short expander box, which describes the prompt instructions, which if you click on it, it will expand. And so this is the input prompt that was given to the OpenAI large language model, along with the image that is provided either the uh, one from mockup or the one from the uploaded mockup image. And then it will use that as the input for generating the code output. And so you could feel free to modify the prompt instructions here in order to fine tune and make the app generate slightly different from the one provided in this starter code. And then the block here from 65 until 130 will provide the image processing or the, the text processing will be done below in the respective tab one here. And so it will take the image that is being uploaded right here in this blocks of code. It will take this block of code here, which will use the pre-generated mockup images selected here from the respective image carousel, or it will use the image upload either one using the if else condition so either the mockup image that is selected from the example or the uploaded mockup image, and then it will attempt to run the large language model in order to generate the code output. And so here, the maximum token that we're setting is 1280, and we're using the GPT-4 vision preview here as the model. And you're gonna see that the image is being written here, the encoded image is being written here and used as the input. And then this is essentially the same as the one from the chatbot tutorial that was created in a prior video, which you could also check out. And then we're printing out the generated code output and the response here. And we also have a warning message if image is not uploaded or the OpenAI key is not available, which means that you might have turned off the API key from the secrets management. All right, and so let's hop on to the next portion, which is the tell component. So the tell here, if you click on it, will comprise of the input text box here, which will be 
right here, the text prompt variable. And then you could provide the input here when the enter when the user enters their text prompt, it will be populating this portion. And then we also have the expander box as described above. And then we have the start button in order to build the generated code output. And then it will essentially run the same logic as the one from the show. And so the same logic applies as well. Same here. And so that's pretty much it for the 200 lines of code that will allow you to show or tell the Streamlit app in order to build a Streamlit app. And so if you're finding value in this video, don't forget to smash the subscribe button, turn on notification bell for future videos, and as always, happy Streamlitting!